Well, first of all, I want to start by thanking the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and the Nobel Committee for the honor of a lifetime. Uh, it's so wonderful to see so many um, family and close friends and colleagues here today. It's been an amazing few days. I'm going to talk about AlphaFold, of course, and the impact it's had so far. But I'm also going to touch on the critical work we did in the lead up to developing AlphaFold and where I think the future of AI for science is going more broadly. So my journey uh, to AI actually started surprisingly with games, and specifically chess. I started playing chess when I was four and played very competitively, captaining many of the England junior chess teams growing up. That's a picture of me on the right um, playing for board one for the England under 11 team uh, when I was nine. And when you play chess seriously at such a young age, it's a very formative experience. And for me, it really got me thinking about thinking itself. I was sort of fascinated, intrigued by how does our mind come up with these ideas, these plans, these strategies, um, and how can that be improved? And as part of the training camps uh, that we went to, uh, we got actually access to early chess computers, uh, like this one here, the, the Fidelity Chess Challenger. And uh, some of you remember these early chess computers, you actually had to press the squares on the board physically, uh, the LEDs on the board to move the pieces around. And of course, we were meant to use these machines to improve our chess skills. Um, but I remember actually being fascinated by the fact that someone had actually managed to program this an inanimate lump of plastic to play chess well against me. So I was intrigued about this, and I started reading um, some books about it, and ended up coding my first AI program uh, on my trusty Amiga 500 that you'll see in the middle there when I was 11, but to play um, the classic game of Othello. And this program, my first AI program, it managed to beat my kid brother. Um, admittedly, he was only five at the time. <laughs> but uh, I was still amazed that I, you know, someone could, you could make something that uh, could do something sort of independently of you. And uh, that got me hooked um, on computers and AI for the rest of my life. So fast forwarding then 20, more than 20 years later, and games are still central to my approach to AI and actually the, at the core of our early work at DeepMind. We started DeepMind in 2010 as an industrial research lab with a mission to build artificial general intelligence. And the vision behind it was to create a kind of modern day Bell Labs. Initially, we used games as the sort of perfect proving ground for AI because it's very easy to generate a lot of data on your computers. Um, you can have the systems play against themselves. Um, and it's easy to specify a clear objective or clear metric to hill climb against. Um, so in most games, you can specify to maximize the score or to, uh, to just win the game. So it's very clear if you're making progress with your algorithmic ideas. Now, of course, the pinnacle for games AI, um, which has a, had a long history, actually from the beginning of AI. Um, so pioneers like Alan Turing and Claude Shannon, um, they all tried their hands at making and um, um, programming uh, chess computers. Um, but the pinnacle for games AI is being Go, the game of Go, the ancient game of Go. Um, it's probably the most complex game um, we've ever devised. One illustration of how complex Go is, is that there are 10 to the power 170 possible positions, which is more than there are atoms in the universe. So there's no way you could write a program that could brute force a solution to playing Go well. So our first big breakthrough really was in, um, a major breakthrough was in 2016 with our AlphaGo system um, that managed to beat the world champion, uh, the so uh, South Korean grandmaster Lee Sedol 4-1 in a famous match in Seoul. But it didn't just win the match. Importantly, it actually came up with new creative strategies and ideas um, that had never been seen before, even though um, we've played Go for thousands of years. And um, the most famous one of these new strategies was actually Move 37 that I'm showing here uh, in the bottom right. Um, and in game two of this, uh, this challenge match, uh, and it's outlined as the black stone outlined in red. And uh, this move uh, had sort of never been seen before uh, in, Go, in top level Go play. Uh, and it turned out to be the perfect move to decide this game two match 100 moves later. 
as if AlphaGo had put it there presciently uh, ahead of time. So how did we do this? Well, the AlphaGo system um, uh, and its successors, AlphaZero, more general successors, mastered the game of Go and also all other two-player games through a process of what we call self-learning. So that's where these systems, instead of being programmed with, directly with solutions, they learn strategies and solutions for themselves. In this case, by playing many hundreds of thousands, in fact millions of games against itself, and incrementally learning from its mistakes and improving its strategies. And, and through this process of self-learning, we can build up a useful neural network model of Go. So AlphaGo and this 2016 result was a bit of a watershed moment, I think, in modern AI, as it was the first kind of big proof point that these sorts of systems, these kind of learning systems, were able to do something pretty impressive and thought to be uh, intractable.